This groove is one of the six grooves in CVS2. Based off of KOF98's extra mode, there are three unique mechanics that can only be performed in this groove. These include the power charge, desperation mode, and the dodge. I will cover them in detail as they are critical to understanding how to perform well with this groove, and any additional subsystem information will be covered later. Though the groove itself is heavily limited, you will never be ruled out once you utilize these mechanics well. The power charge is one of the two unique S-group mechanics. By pressing and holding heavy punch and heavy kick, you will slowly charge your meter exponentially. Once you do charge your meter fully, you enter max mode, where you have a 15% attack boost and have access to a level 1 super. The uh, duration is limited though, so please keep that in mind. The key to power charging is knowing when is the right time to use it. Generally, there are three scenarios. I'll be demonstrating them with Sagat and other s group characters. In any scenario where you can create a knockdown, you can get a decent chunk of meter from a power charge. This can apply with throws. Or a combo that causes a knockdown. It is not preferred to use either in the corner due to the fact that Quick Rise exists and they can punish your recovery, as power charges do have some recovery once you are done power charging, as demonstrated here. The best scenario is when a super causes an uncheckable knockdown and it leaves you a lot of time to power charge. Two notable examples of these are Benny Maru and Habiki. Obviously, I didn't get a full power charge there because Blanca could have poked me out, but I charged a decent amount of meter. Overall, they are very consistent methods of getting meter. Unfortunately, there is an inherently fundamental issue with power charging here. Wouldn't it be best to pressure instead? Well, that's where decision making and meter management come into play. Yes, ideally you would pressure during a knockdown during situations that I have shown, but there are times where you do need something like a guard cancel. Uh, I'll demonstrate a certain scenario where you might need this. It's important to have that. Um, I would suggest that you charge meter evenly throughout the match. This makes it so that once you do end up getting in a situation that may be a little undesirable, if you know when to power charge throughout the match, you can always have something like a super or a guard cancel, and you can always have it when you need it the most. This is hard though, and it takes some real match practice and game sense. I'd actually argue that S group is the hardest when it comes to meter management due to the fact that meter is gained so easily but you cannot gain meter from traditional methods like hitting the opponent or whiffing attacks. The second scenario is when you have something to protect you, like a fireball. I'm demonstrating with Athena here because she could be really good in Eskru due to her zoning nature. Psycho Ball is a very large part of her kit, and due to the, how good the projectile is, you can power charge in between durations of Psycho Ball. And if they choose to jump, you can simply anti-air with something like Stand Medium Punch, Stand Medium Kick, or DP, or a Jump Back Normal. She has a really good uh, fit with s Groove and is one of the better s Groove characters overall. Characters who don't live and die by their pressure can use Power Charge effectively. Other characters that fall into this category include Guile, Honda, Bison, Claw, Sagat, Hibiki, Mai, and Yamazaki. If you know when the range is high enough and you have a fireball or some other projectile as a shield, there should be many opportunities to slowly charge up the meter. The final scenario is not really a scenario, rather it's just pure neutral. Spatial awareness can grant you a lot of meter. If you're not at a range where you can bait a jump and not risk getting pummeled by a poke, you can get a very quick power charge. 
From full screen, you can charge for even longer. Characters who have a really powerful neutral game like Sagat or Claw can charge power for a fairly long period of time before running out of time. Before I move on, there's just one side note. You'll notice fellow Ashgrief player Dr. B use a weird power charge feint technique during matches. Though it looks cool, this does not actually produce meter due to the exponential charge. It's used mainly as a provocative action, baiting a jump from the opponent or just a dumb move, almost like a mini taunt. I just wanted to clarify, I'm not trying to downplay Dr. B's play, he's actually the one who taught me S Groove, and I do respect what he has done over the years for the Groove. But it's just something I wanted to make sure of before you try using it in a real match, thinking it would provide some meter benefit. Now, on to the next mechanic. Desperation Mode, also known as Red Life, is when you are below 25% health, as you can see this as indicated from my life flashing white. This is only specific to Eskrim. Once you are in this mode, you will gain two things. You will have a permanent 5% attack boost on all attacks, including supers, but more importantly, you will have infinite level 1 supers. If I charge my meter, you'll also notice that my level 1s in Desperation Mode don't take away my meter. I still get to keep whatever meter I've charged, as I am continuing to do supers. More on this later, but the big takeaway of it all is that if I am in max mode, my level 1 super turns into a level 3 super. Essentially, this is more or less the gimmick of s -Groove. You're given infinite level 1 supers, and you're given a level 3 if you somehow manage to charge your meter to full. This is really important, and this is why power charging is incredibly crucial, especially during the later stages of a match when you can really use a mix-up or just a combo in general. Most level 3 supers in this game are really good, as you can tell, but as for your level 1s, the list is narrowed by a lot. I can deal a ton of damage with a level 3, or level 1, it's really character dependent. So, what is exactly the list? What are the best supers to use in desperation mode? Well, I'll keep the list and explanations short, but these supers are really good to use in desperation mode, and can do big damage if used right. Buster Wolf, safe to use in almost any situation and confirms into massive damage on hit. Probably the most abusable desperation super in the whole game, however it can be jumped over for a punish. Shining Crystal Bit There is a corner trap where you repeatedly use this one super, however, it is very difficult to perform consistently. It deals good chip, but it does not give you the greatest reward on hit unless it's a level 3. Sakura's Fireball I think this clip will explain everything for you. <laughs> シンクーパー。シンクーパー。シンクーパー。シンクーパー。シンクーパー。シンクーパー。シンクーパー。シンクーパー。シンクーパー。シンクーパー。シンクーパー。シンクーパー。シンクーパー。シンクーパー。シン
The damage is fairly low most times, but the hard knockdown definitely makes up for it as you are allowed time to power charge afterwards. Just make sure that if your super is unsafe on block, use it only on hit. Eagle is a really good example of this. Eagle will eat a punish here on block, but the super is really good on hit due to its high damage for a level 1. Now, there's one more mechanic to cover, and it's the number one most important to incorporate properly into your game as an s groover and that is the dodge. Dodging on the surface is generally described as a worse roll. That is true, you cannot roll cancel or move forward during it, but there are some specific things dodge has that a roll does not. When dodging, you can press an attack button and you will perform a dodge attack. This is good to have for different situations that I will explain later. One dodge attack is cancelable into a special and super, the other one causes a knockdown but is not cancelable. The exact quality of your dodge attack is character dependent. I link the spreadsheet listing every character's attack data so you can see how good their dodge attack is. But for the sake of the video, I'll quickly list off who has the best dodge attacks. First. We have Kami, one of the very, very few characters in the game who has arguably her best two normals as her dodge attacks in Close Fierce and Stand Roundhouse. I consider her dodge attacks to be far and away the best in the game. Sakura, she's the only one who could try to compare with Kami's dodge attacks. She has basically the same types of dodge attacks, but what holds her back compared to Kami is that her kick attack starts up slower and her punch attack is minus 10 with very lengthy recovery. That is merely splitting hairs though. Overall, she has among the best dodge attacks in the game. Ryu. It's really hard to contend with the dodge punch attack. His dodge kick attack is just above average, but his dodge attack alone makes him have good dodge attacks. Iori. Though his stand roundhouse can be ducked by about half the cast, it's still a really strong button, but a slight tier below similar roundhouse buttons like Yamazaki and Sakura. His close fierce gives him a free knockdown on hit and free chip on block if you don't finish it. He just has really great dodge attacks overall and they lead into some great reward. Dictator. He does use a medium for his dodge punch, but the fact that it can easily be buffered into a special makes up for it. His kick attack on paper is slow, but it lands more than it should. I'm not complaining about it though. Kyo. His punch attack definitely leaves a lot to be desired as it uses his rather mediocre stand heavy punch but his dodge kick attack is godlike. Close heavy kick, despite being a close normal, has really good range, and can combo into his up kicks, which can then turn into massive damage, especially with a level 3 Orochinagi. As of now, there is nobody who uses SKO seriously, but if there anyone was that used him, they definitely make great use of his particular dodge attacks. Unfortunately, the dodge kick attack will whiff at max range into something like Rekka, although this is usually a problem that Kyo will not face as much due to his playstyle. There are a lot more dodge attacks out there, and a lot more quirks and different sort of styles and counterattacks you can use with them, but I suggest you look into the s group dodge attack spreadsheet to find character specific stuff not listed in this video. The link is in the description. So what are you supposed to use a dodge? Well, I mean that's more up to you, but generally I have three different scenarios where you can reliably dodge, and I'll cover certain ranges where you should and should not dodge at. It's a lot more complex, but usually these three scenarios will be the most commonplace in any sort of s group scenario, and any other additional dodges that you do are usually player dependent. You can kind of move around with it as you like. You could put a little more stock. You could be a little less with the dodges. It really doesn't matter. But these three scenarios, I heavily suggest you actually do learn so that you end up performing really well with your dodges. Most times, the opponent might attempt to poke out of a block streak. This is where you set up a specific range where the opponent's poke will be dodged out of, but you can land your dodge attack. Bonus points if you can pick up a dodge attack cancel, but that's somewhat rare since usually the opponent will try to throw up close. This works with surprising consistency. If you do it enough times, the opponent will either be conditioned to block more or will try to throw, 
in which case you can pressure more with something like run stop or you could just poke out of it with a basic uh, crouch medium kick generally there's a lot of different outcomes you can enforce just because the opponent is trying to play around your dodge the key here is to know exactly what your opponent wants you to do when you dodge. They either want to play offensively or defensively. In this case, Rog is trying to play defensively. And if you play enough offense, you could secure a guard break into some damage. The way you operate from the dodge attacks and the setups there is mostly up to you and it's player dependent. Some players will want to play more offensively, defensively, and it's character dependent as well. Some zoning characters will prefer to actually play more defensively when you're trying to pressure them during your dodges. You at least have an idea of how to approach it from here. Right now, I'm demonstrating a more offensively happy uh, scenario. This is similar to the post block string scenario, but it's for single moves rather than a string of multiple moves. This goes hand in hand with the post block string scenario. When you perform a move that cannot be immediately punished but looks like it could be punished, you can dodge out of an attempted counterattack with a dodge attack. The scenario here is a little difficult to demonstrate, simply because of the fact that I don't have a player 2, but optimally, you'd, you'd see me do a scissor kick, and then I dodge, he sweeps. And then I could get out of the way and perform the punish. Like so. You'll see this with moves like a one-hit scissor kick, Yori's Rekka, Sakura's Tatsu, and other moves around a minus three to minus five range. You can't really spam these moves though. Instant supers like Tiger Raid, Pigaton Blow, and Mega Psycho Crusher will be able to punish these moves on block, minus Sakura's Tatsu due to it being plus one. Still, this makes for a really good way of checking a button-happy opponent, for a lack of a better term. If you do it too much, they will try to throw you, but again, you can work around that. It all ties back to knowing what the opponent wants to do when you dodge, and if they choose offense over defense, you can simply poke out of it. Or, in Bison's case, a heavy Psycho Crusher. Overall, it's, it's a very good use of the dodge, and it may not look like it in this scenario since, again, I don't have a player to you'll notice that it's going to work very well against real players. At least ones that will tend to use a lot more buttons. When an opponent is pressuring you, you'll notice that they'll do certain block string patterns. Most of the time, the string will end in a gap that you can exploit. This is not the easiest thing to do, as dodging from this range can risk a throw. But this can condition the opponent to be a little less aggressive. But usually if the opponent will pressure like this, they'll try to go for a throw. So notice how this is a pretty common Terry block string, I'd like to think it is at least. Just doing ending in sweep. But the thing is Eventually, if I do this enough times, I'm, I'm gonna end up getting thrown. They're gonna do three crouch light kicks, expect the dodge, and try to throw me. So, if this happens, you gotta get your jabs ready, or your shorts. 
So they try to throw you. You know, you gotta get that low short short ready. I'm keeping this one a little more simple because you should do this less frequently. The reason why is simply because of the fact that you are going to be open to throws. Even intermediate players are going to have the mental capacity to see you dodge and they're going to attempt to throw you by a simple tick throw. Any Anyone can do a tick throw, it's not that hard to do. So that when they do those three of those shorts and they see you try to do that, They're either going to mix up their block string or they're going to mix up their block string or they're going to try to throw you. But this mostly comes with just knowledge on what block strings will actually end up creating those sorts of gaps because realistically, there's a ton of block strings in this game that you can do. I mean, hey, j Hill, just with Ryu, you have things like crouch light, crouch medium, crouch uh, medium kick into Hadoken. So there's a lot of different strings that you have to memorize and exactly which ones have gaps and which ones don't. This one is just an example, but there's a lot more. I can't really list them all. But um, yeah, just make sure that you know which strings have gaps so you can abuse that with a dodge. And on top of that, if they notice that you do it a little too much, they're going to try to tick throw you, so don't always dodge after this. I don't recommend just, you see those three low shorts, oh, I'm going to dodge. Don't do that. If you see those three low shorts in this situation, you can simply either eat the block string and then just kind of work it out from there because you could try to jump, you know, anti-air, try running forward, you poke them out of it. There's a ton of different ways you can enforce outcomes because, again, they are specifically looking for your dodge. I don't think enough people know how much dodge can actually control neutral. So most of the times you're going to try to condition the opponents to do specific things just because they're expecting a single move out of you. And this is one of those scenarios where you have to make sure, okay, I think the opponent wants to throw me here or they want to actually be aggressive and I can dodge out of the way and attack. But if the opponent is not taking dodge into consideration, then you can definitely try to sit him down with this mechanic. Otherwise, just be patient, look out for throws, get out your low shorts, your anti-throw stuff. Hell, I mean, you have s group, you know, you have supers. But, uh, yeah, that's the last scenario I have. Besides that, there's a couple of other things that I want to go over when it comes to dodging, but they aren't going to be as clear-cut as you would think, but I'll try to simplify it to the best of my ability. Besides that, dodges serve fairly basic uses. I mean, obviously you're going to have to do some things like dodging out of a fireball because you don't want to block it and get chipped. If I'm at, like, no health and I'm going to die from, like, a super or a projectile, yeah, you can dodge to get out of the way here. You know, I, 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 I'm pretty sure you would know this. Just wanted to clarify just to make sure, but... I, I know what I said was somewhat complicated, but... Dodges can be simple too, and this is one of those scenarios. Throwing a fireball, you want to avoid the chip, just dodge out of the way. Uh, obviously, if you're at no health, a good opponent will know that you're going to try to dodge more to avoid chip, so they're going to try to throw you instead. In that situation, it's really hard to make a decent comeback out of that, but I would just suggest to try to get as much throw text as you can, although I can't guarantee you that that's going to be of any use, but it will come in handy. Trust me, I've done some comebacks with Sagat before. Um, you can definitely do some crazy shit as long as as you are well aware of the opponent and what they want to do when you dodge. I, I sound like a broken record when I'm saying this, but I always want to come back to that point. As long as you read what the opponent wants to do when you dodge, trust me, it will be really easy to sniff out what they want to do and punch. 
Um, now I'm gonna go into a little bit more in-depth stuff about a dodge and what you can do that can't be necessarily demonstrated from a dodge. Besides those scenarios, dodging well is a byproduct of both your playstyle and how you control it in neutral. As Dr. B told me, dodges are like parries. You use them to try to deny the opponent their poke, and you can punish. If that sounds confusing, I understand. Essentially, what this means is that you dodge in neutral to avoid pokes and potentially punish them through just pure game sense in neutral and knowing when the opponent likes to poke. Characters with dodge attacks that hit all crouchers can do really great in this regard, as you can try to pick up a quick punish from any sort of given dodge. This is difficult to do at first, but eventually, with enough game sense, you can detect pokes in neutral a lot easier, and you can avoid them with a quick dodge attack. Generally, people do like to poke near max range with their given button to maximize safety, and you can try to work around that. This especially works against buttons with long recovery. This takes careful studying of the preferred pokes of certain characters and what range they prefer to use them at, but generally, a smart opponent will use a poke near its max range as I've mentioned before in order to make them as safe as possible should they be blocked. I have a playlist of S-Group videos and various S-Group users that you can take a look at. Watch them and study how they use dodge and neutral and you will slowly catch on. Now, onto specific dodge tech. Now this little piece of tech is what I like to call change dodging, or in this case, a double dodge. So basically what a double dodge is, is that yes, you are able to block the first ring after a dodge. So that you can prevent getting meatied, but what you can do is that you can chain your dodge into another dodge within a 4 frame window. It is a little hard to do at first. The timing is somewhat strict. But the way to know if you got it is if the opponent never enters crouching state as you can see here. This is very useful against slow fireballs and quick pokes that have very high active frames so that they kind of fuck over your attempted punish and you can eat something on block into a special for some unneeded chip. Instead you can avoid all of that nonsense with just a quick double dodge. Hell, you could do this infinitely really. As you can see here, you can chain like a bunch of these together. Now, obviously, you wouldn't be- the reason why I call this double dodging is that you wouldn't be doing this more than, like, three times at most. And this is why I call it double dodge, because most times, you're gonna be doing it twice. It's actually really useful. Uh, doing it more than twice, I mean, th that's more just, like, taunting, really. Just mashing dodge. But yeah, this mostly just takes timing. I had to get adjusted the timing myself. But now that I have the timing down, it's it's a really simple thing. It's pretty simple and um, yeah, you can definitely add this to your arsenal, especially against slow fireballs where you don't want to just eat something on block or against really fast pokes, like, you know, mashing low short or if they just have a ton of active frames and you just cannot afford to block it in an unnecessary chip. So you can kind of just dodge like this instead. This is also really good against attacks that deal a lot of chip and have a lot of active frames that you don't feel like blocking all that much. This can be true for a super like Hoyokusen. Uh, if you can dodge out of the way of all the attacks through double dodge or even triple dodge, you can uh, get a free punish out of it, and I will demonstrate here. My punish was shit, but... As you can see, you can easily just dodge out of the way if you know the timing for it. Again, it is hard, 
But you know, I'd argue the Daigo parry is harder. But yeah, you can definitely do this for a super... A super of this uh, manner. Uh, other supers that fall into this category include uh, Eagles, Union Jack, Platinum, maybe the Beret super that Kami does, stuff like that, where you're basically forced to block them. And Shinryuken, you, you're forced to block them and they deal a lot of chip on block. You can dodge out of the way of them using a double dodge. <laughs> It's really use it's a really useful piece of tech, and I feel like it is necessary to add into your arsenal for given situations like these. I covered this little piece of tech in a CPS2 tech video, but I will do a quick rundown here. Essentially, you can buffer a special move during a dodge, and you can cancel your cancelable dodge attack into that special, like this. This allows you to get a special out much quicker than usual. Unfortunately, this isn't quite a roll cancel as it doesn't have iframes, but it does serve some good uses. They're not going to be, you know, all-encompassing and all that versatile, but they will prove to be useful. And I consider three general scenarios that I would find useful for this particular bit of tech. Firstly, it helps if you need to create a quick anti-air. Sometimes you may dodge at a range that is not ideal. I'll talk about that later, but in this situation, you will have to do something or risk getting pummeled. In this scenario, Kyo is going to jump at me, and what I'm going to do is that if I'm stuck in dodge, I'm going to do a dodge cancel Shoryuken. As you can see, it's going to trade. Sometimes if I get the jump on it, it ends up working out. Sometimes I'll lose. This is uh, quite difficult, and it does require you to um, know exactly, okay, he's going to jump at me. I'm going to need to do a quick show you can. This may not always work because short hops exist and also fast characters like Nakaruru, you're not going to be able to react to that jump fast enough. But in this situation, against an average jump without short hop, you can definitely do this scenario if you're stuck in dodge. Uh, usually, you can people try to dodge and then grab afterwards like this. This does work. I mean... It won't always work, though. That's the thing. Sometimes you'll just quite literally block. So, in this situation, you're kind of just forced to create a quick anti-air. Uh, it may not be completely commonplace, but there will be times where this sort of scenario will play into an actual match. In this in this case, Kyo's down heavy punch has a lot of priority. Standard jump-ins might not beat this. That's the first bit I have. Very useful. Now onto the second bit of tech. 
this second scenario is usually done when you have a cancelable dodge attack. However, it will whiff and you need to still pick up a punish because you just have to capitalize on everything as Eskrude. You need to take all the damage you can get. So, basically, what you need to do here is you cancel the dodge attack into something that you can actually punish with. In this scenario, I will demonstrate with Bison and Yori. If I try to do a regular dodge attack, it's gonna whiff because Yori is too short. So instead, I dodge cancel into a Psycho Crusher. This is really good due to the fact that um, Bison's Psycho Crusher is really fast and it can pick up a lot of punishes from longer ranges. Command grabs also work with this too, like SPD, but they are incredibly difficult to perform, and generally, strike moves have a lot higher chance of landing in any given scenario. Oops. This isn't the only scenario where this will happen. You will see other gaps and strings and you can, you won't be able to punish them unless you do a dodge cancel. So I think in my opinion, this is one you'll probably use most in a real match scenario, especially with someone like Bison who can pick up a lot of punishes from things like a Psycho Crusher. One more time. This scenario applies to certain characters that have a quick special move, like for example, Akuma's like Tatsu, Maki's Commander, and Sagat's Knee. If your dodge attack or cancelable attack has a very lengthy recovery, you can cancel it into something safer, like say, a command roll. Now, when would you use this though? Well, let's say for example, you're dodging and someone's jumping at you. As you can see, uh, I'm dodging, I'm going to be forced to eat the pressure, but instead, I instead dodge out of the way, and if I see it, I'm just going to command roll out of the way, just to make myself safer. This does take a little bit of preemptive work, but generally, if you dodge, and you're expecting like a sweep and he instead jumps at you, you can instead cancel into a roll. Gets me out of the way. And certain other moves like a Tatsu can make sure that you are still safe from this given attack. If you do it too late, you will get hit. And that's not gonna be good. You can pick up a punish if you do it early, but generally chances are you're not going to be able to do it that fast. You have to cancel into really fast though, otherwise, yeah, you're getting hit. And Geese's jump medium kick uh, is also really good, so you you really have to work around that. Cross-ups and jump-ins like that can work with those quick special moves, just so you can get you out of the way. But other times where you end up performing like a dodge attack that whips from... Let's just say you perform a dodge attack expecting a punish, but you whiff it. You can instead do it into something safer, like a funky kick. This one's a little difficult for me. Yeah, so if you if you end up seeing that it whiffs, you can cancel it into something safer. Those are two scenarios where I think you can do that dodge cancel if your um, dodge attack has a lengthy recovery. 
The thing with these is that dodge attacks are Kara cancelable into both special and super. No matter what they are. They will have a cancel window, but they will always be able to be cancelled into a super or a special move. Even if the move they are based off of did not have that previously. So, take advantage of the dodge buffer. I feel like it's simple in idea, niche in execution. You may not use it much, but eventually there will be some times where it does come in handy. And that's all for the dodge buffer. Um, now, what do you do with dodge? I've covered what you're supposed to do with dodge, but what are some situations where you shouldn't use dodge? Well, it's complicated. And uh, it goes from character to character, but I would prefer not to use dodge in these given scenarios. Firstly, there is dodging when the opponent has no feasible way of hitting you. Do not overuse dodges. You're better off using power charges to gain meter. Since you could use that more than a dodge punish, that probably won't even happen. Sure, it can annoy the opponent, but in my opinion, necessities come before mind games. Unless you know that the opponent has an extremely long range attack that can strike you from that far, just stay patient and operate as your character demands. You don't want to waste any time dodging until you absolutely have to use it. For example, Hibiki has a distance slash. It's very long and very unsafe. You are okay to dodge at this range, since if you do, you are awarded a punish if you run in and strike her with a quick poke. But most of the time, the range of the opponent will not be that far, and you will instead have to operate up more close at a mid-screen to footsie's range, which is why you need to study which ranges the opponent likes to poke at, so you can know when and when not to dodge, given the circumstances. Secondly, there is dodging against characters with fast jumps. Characters that have fast jumps in CBS2 include Blanca, Claw, Mai, and Nakaruru. Dodging against them is usually going into lead into a lot of throws for them, since timing for dodging there is very different against them. The dodge's duration would be too long, since their jump is so fast, and they basically get free pressure on you. Do not rely on dodge as much against these fast characters, because most of the time it will not work, and I can say that from experience. As a side note, you can dodge against low jumps as you have a little more leeway, but they are fast in their duration rather than their speed. It's hard to pick up a punish against a low jump, as you have to dodge just right so that you recover from the dodge as the opponent is just about to hit the ground, so you have plenty of time to throw them during their landing recovery. I would say just as soon as they leave the ground is when you can do this. Due to the strict timing, I'd be more careful on dodging against low jumps, but you can still do it if need be, although empty low jumps is where you might have a problem, since you dodge and they can more easily throw you. This is more where you have to understand what the opponent wants to do, and how they tend to use their low jumps. For example, Sagat with a level 3 will more likely low jump, since they are actively looking for a Tiger Raid mix-up. However, as I said before, this sort of stuff will not work with characters that have fast jumps, as their low jumps are also extremely fast and just as hard to react to. In summation, just don't dodge a lot against fast jump characters since they will bypass almost all your dodges just on their speed alone. Thirdly, there is dodging at a range and timing where the opponent will essentially get a free jump in on you. Even though you do have a defensive subsystem, it's best that you use it in a more important situation. This sort of scenario is one that you can avoid by instead simply relying on your anti-airs and not relying on dodge to avoid the jump in. You might dodge at a timing that's too early for the jump in to be avoided. You could still attempt to dodge cancel anti-air, but if you cannot react to the situation, then it's best to avoid it. As well, your anti-airs will probably lose against a meaty jump in, where you have to essentially eat the jump in. Once you dodge attack, there is still some startup, so if you try to do a dodge attack and the opponent is low enough, you will just lose outright, and that will not be something that you'd want to deal with. I would say, at this particular range, is where you should instead react to the opponent's moves rather than predicting them with a dodge. On top of that, the opponent can empty jump and catch you dodging since they do not do anything in the air. If you do not react with some sort of anti-air during the dodge, expect a throw. 
As well, empty jumps are going to be more commonplace against Eskrew, since the opponent knows that dodges are throwable, and empty jumps can lead to a decent amount of throws, so just be ready for that. Dodges will always skip a poke in neutral. You are going to have to basically just use whatever your character has to get by in this given scenario, in which case, just lean more on anti-airs instead of dodging, as you are open to empty jumps and needy jump ins. Finally, if you see the opponent clearly walking forward, do not dodge. This one will take some getting used to, but for characters that have an average throw range, they will have to walk forward in order to tick throw off of a given block string. I would not recommend dodging at this close of a range anyways, since you're stuck for a good while and can't do a dodge attack until 18 frames in, which usually gives the opponent enough time to throw. Do not get twitchy with dodges, because using a dodge at this close of a range will lead into a throw against a good opponent who is aware of which ranges dodges are good at, and range is not one of them. Dodges are not the answer to everything, and these sorts of scramble situations will kill you rather than help you. That's all I can really give for the dodge. It took me a lot to explain it, I know, but I feel it is too large of a mechanic to explain quickly if my intention is to show every bit and piece on what to do and not to do when using it. Now, on to the other Universal Groove subsystems that S-Groove has. Finally, here is the list of the Groove subsystems that S-Groove has. You may know them, you may not. They include the Run, Short Hop, Guard Cancel, and Tactical Recovery. Having a run is good. It allows for run stop pressure, and you can more easily create offense with it, compared to dashes, which are more character dependent. Runs have variable speeds, however, so I linked an image that shows who has the best run speeds. This can apply to other groups as well. The faster run speed, the better the offense you can make through run stop pressure and just through getting in. Short hops are really good too, as they allow for mix-ups and punishing low attacks easier. However, low jumps have more landing frames where you cannot do anything should you do a low jump attack which makes it easy for characters to punish your landing, so use it wisely. This is especially true against characters with powerful pokes, like Sagat Crouch Fierce. Guard cancels get you out of sticky situations if you manage your meter well, which is why I emphasize good meter management, especially in S-Group, in order to have access to one when you really need it. Tactical recovery is just another way of saying delayed wake up. I have a CEDS2 tech video on it, so check that out if you want a better analysis on what it can do, as the video is already getting too long as it is. Those are what you have access to outside of dodge, power charge, and desperation mode. They do not completely change what I've already said, but knowing when to use those mechanics in tandem with the unique S-group ones that I have explained means that you can still create damage, even if it is not as threatening as the top tier grooves of A and K. Honestly, that's about all I have regarding the unique S-group mechanics. I do deeply apologize for it being such a lengthy video, but I tend to get a little long when I explain things of this nature anyways. If you got this far, then you probably don't mind and just wanted to get the necessary information, so I thank you for that. That's all I have for this video. Uh, if you got this far, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a really good day. Peace. is about to explode. Fight! <laughs>
I think he hit, he hit the startup, yeah. Okay. Keeps him standing. Keeps my standing. He should follow up now. There you go. There you go. Oh, oh my where's god. Where's the uppercut? Oh, where's the uppercut? Where's was, the dodge? It was, with anything? Space. it was perfect spacing. And let's see if Sugat can keep this lead. Low forward super right now. Oh no! Okay. Doesn't do much damage, but you still. He, 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 he's not raised. He's not raised. Yeah. Oh! Dr. B went full all out with that walk up throw attempt just now. <laughs> he didn't cancel anything after that fierce punch. He was making it happen. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta feel it. You gotta know. You gotta know. Okay, so let's see if he's gonna try to bait a lot of throws here. I think that um, Nerdrot is just gonna try to throw him out of all the dodges. Okay, okay. Okay, Dr. B is ready for level three. Good combo. Rush up low forward super. Or crutching. He's not using his uh, meter. Okay, okay. good uppercut. No, not looking like Dr. B can do anything else. Uh, oh, hit! There, let's see. Still in there. The Josh Ash is. Oh no! Oh! Chip. You can follow up with it. Hello. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> what a comeback! What a comeback! What a comeback from Dr. B.